everybody, how are you? It's Leslie from Leslie's Creative Studio, and welcome to my muse for my creative year for the month of May 2019. And yes, it is May. I'm so thrilled. Finally, warm weather coming once we get through all these storms that are going through the great Midwest. <laughs> anyway, um, I would like to share with you what my muse has been sharing with me and directing me to go. And it is screaming vintage, 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 go vintage. So um, I decided that I'm going to follow my muse and go vintage. So let me show you um, something that I've been working on and I'm going to be continuing to work on for as long as I can. And that is working on coffee dyed paper. Um, so let me get some things and I'll bring it right back. Okay, so as you can see, I have some tin things here, aluminum actually, and of course these. But let's start with this pan. This pan I fill with coffee. Um, I'm an avid coffee drinker. So what I do is um, I will take um, a pot of coffee and the coffee grounds after they've been brewed and I will dump them in here. And then I will add a cap full of this instant coffee. And then I just kind of stir it around with this. All right, so it, it's nice and dark and it smells wonderful. My kitchen smells so good. Okay, so I have eight of these, eight. This is like, I don't know the size, like nine by 13, a little, probably a little bit shorter than that. Because like I said, I have eight of these. I can fit four of these into my oven at a time. But before I do any of that, I put down this lovely parchment paper, and yes, it is parchment paper. So what I do is, just so you can kind of see the process, I want you all to see it. My coffee is in here, and this is here. Now mind you, you can see that there's texture on this. If you don't want texture on your paper, just lay a piece of aluminum foil down on top of this and it'll, this will not leave texture then on your paper, but I'm all about the texture. So I like it. I'm fine with it. So I'm going to show you kind of, sort of, without really doing it, <laughs> what I do. This is full of coffee and this is my tray. And this is down to protect the countertop because you're going to get splatters everywhere anyway, but this just helps a little bit. So I literally will come in like this, scoop it, scoop it through that, and then lay it on here and then stick it in the oven. And I actually will get four of these and, and stack them and then put them in the oven. And... I was putting my oven at 200 and keeping an eye on it. And once I noticed that the edges were starting to curl a little bit, I would literally go in and flip them with these tongs. I would just take the paper and flip it. Just flip it to make sure both sides got kind of toasty brown. And then the nice thing about these tongs is that I would just go in and pull the trays out this way too. Um, I will tell you, do not leave your oven. Plan on, if you're going to coffee dye paper, tags, whatever, do not leave your kitchen. Plan on spending the day. Turn the music up loud, have a blast, um, sing out of tune, whatever. Um, that's what I do. That's what I did. Um, I just spent an entire day in my kitchen, just coffee dyeing, everything I could get my hands on. So there is that. Oops. Now, the other thing, and I'll let you see the paper here. 
Wait a minute. I want to get some of this stuff. Let me get this cleaned up. I'll be right back. Ta-da! I'm back. This is everything I coffee dyed that day. Well, with the exception of this. This didn't get coffee dyed that day. This here is just plain old copy paper that you would use in your printer. And yes, it tore because I wasn't particularly delicate with it. But I think you can kind of see the texture that the pan left on it. I'm fine with that. I am totally fine with that. But you will notice that the edges are a little crispy. So it just depends on how you want it to look. This part here folded over. So this part here isn't as stained as this part here. But every page looks a little different. And that's what I like. So I'm going to stick this back in the bag. I'm going to try and stick this back in the bag. This here, I took a composition notebook, opened it up, and there's only one that this whole this whole composition notebook is one one signature. I clipped the thread and pulled out all the paper. This here is an entire composition notebook that I coffee stained. And this is what that looks like. You can see the lines on it. But how cool is that? Now, when you coffee stain anything, when you get it out of the oven and it's dry, um, it's a little wrinkly and wavy. So depending on what your preference is, I, um, I want to, I wanted to flatten mine a little bit. So I pulled a Shannon green <laughs> and I ironed all my paper. I'm not kidding. And I'll show you that in a second. But I also want to show you what else I coffee dyed. These are tags. I coffee dyed tags. These are just shipping tags that you get in bulk at Walmart. I mean, look at that. Isn't that awesome? Tell me this doesn't look like it's really old. It does. So I did big ones. Those are the little ones. Um, these are the bigger ones I did. And they turned out really cool. And that light's not really doing it justice, but they're not quite as stained as these. But that's okay. I don't care. Okay, so the other thing that I did was I took all of the ties that went to the tags and I took a cup and I poured the coffee into it and I took all of these and all of these, scrunched them up and put them into a bowl with coffee on it and then I put something on top of that to put pressure on them so they stayed in the coffee because they had, to, had a tendency to try and float back up to the top, especially these. And I just let them sit all day in the coffee. And then um, when I got home from work, I pulled them out and I set them on one of the tins. And then I set them, I just let them dry for like a day or two. So you can see how beautiful these turned out. These are nice coffee stained pieces of string that will go well with my tags or you know anything else that I would want to use use them for because actually a lot of times with my tags I use I like to use twine so this could be for whatever 
And it's all about, this is all stuff I had in my house. I had the coffee in my house. I did have to buy these. But, I mean, they're really not that expensive. And let's face it, folks, really, if you have to, just throw some aluminum foil down on your um, on your racks in your oven. You can do it that way, too. Everybody, just about everybody has aluminum foil. But I knew that this would be worth the investment of three whole dollars because I would use them over and over again. So I coffee, I coffee dyed these and oh, let me just give you a heads up about something. These are called gloves, rubber gloves. Yeah. You know what? When you're sticking your hand in coffee all day long, your fingernails and the creases right in here. Yeah. They turn like brown like really an ugly brown so get yourself some of these they're not that expensive just pick some up that way you know what your hands will stay clean <laughs> you only have to be scrubbing your fingernails like I was that night I was like oh my gosh I cannot go into work with my fingernails looking like that they were a hot mess so there was that, and then I have one of these. This is an ironing board. Yep, just an ironing board. So I set it right here, literally right here on my desk. I have my craft iron. This is literally a $10 iron from Walmart. And I was online chatting with some friends and I just sat there while we were chatting and ironed all my paper. Got everything done in one foul swoop. Ironed all of it. Um, I think what I might do though is because this is so cheap, I can really feel the um, this underneath it, whatever this is. Um, I may put some more something underneath there to give it a little more um although that's kind of might add some cool texture i don't know but anyway this is how i do it easy peasy so that's my muse i am going vintage ladies i am going vintage so you know i, I don't know what else to tell you except you know what give it a try People, um, instead of using coffee, they may use tea bags. Um, I, I personally think tea bags make it a little too light, uh, but that maybe that's what you want. Use what you want. Use coffee, use tea. Either way, they make a great stain or dye for your paper to create that vintage look that a lot of people are looking for. Um, when they're making books or tags or whatever. But anyway, that's where my muse is taking me and I'm going to follow it with, you know, my heart's content. <laughs> I plan on doing some book, some book pages, some music pages, dictionary pages and doing those hopefully this weekend. Um, cause it'll be quiet and I'll be the only one home. <laughs> And I can get that done. So that's my muse for May 2019 for my creative year. I hope I inspired you to do something creative. I hope it gave you some ideas. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, like I said, uh, I kept the oven at about 200 degrees. Um, and when it started to curl, it's like maybe, I don't know, two minutes. Everybody's oven is different. You know your oven. Just like, you know, you know your oven. You know how well, how things bake in it. So I did get a little um, antsy towards the end and turn it up to 300. Um, so it was like, I don't know, a minute and a half to dry the soaked paper. Um, but like I said, I literally, literally was sitting on a chair in my kitchen by my oven watching my paper. But I had music going and I was happy. I was happy and that's all that matters. So be happy, 
have fun. Um, follow your muse. You never know where it's going to take you. And as always, be nice. It's really not that difficult. Have a great May, everybody. Bye-bye.